Manchester is a city overflowing with streets, parks, benches and buildings for us to explore in. Although, there are some that we aren't allowed to go inside. Using stealth to gain access into locations typically restricted from the general public, urban explorers aim to uncover the historical accounts inside derelict locations, rooftops, drains, construction sites or any other location that may have restricted access. Living by a humble credo, to take only pictures and leave only footsteps. In this documentary, I'll be investigating this fascinating lifestyle by talking to two urban explorers, as well as looking into how legal this activity really is. Today I'm here at the University of Salford to talk to a student who happily admits he's dabbled in the activity known as urban exploring. I'm meeting him to learn more about what the motivation is behind urban exploring. My name's Gabriel and I do a little bit of urban exploring. For me, urban exploring is about looking at getting into places that you probably wouldn't be able to get into like in an everyday kind of uh, scenario. Big buildings or derelict buildings or even just hotels and things like that. And what do urban explorers do when they get into those sort of places? Different people have different motivations for, you know, for getting into these places. A lot of people do it for the sake of getting photographs, uh, photography and, and cinema kind of things. Um, other people just do it for the adrenaline rush. Through Gabriel, I managed to meet another urban explorer. He was happy to be interviewed on the condition he was kept anonymous. I met him in a confidential location to gather his thoughts on urban exploring. I came across urban exploring basically through a, f a friend of a friend's Facebook profile. I'm not going to tell you which specific building it was on, but if you stand on Market Street outside Foot Locker, that is what it was looking down onto. I'm looking at this computer thinking, how did he get up there? I want to get up there, I want to do that. I, I, I genuinely could not believe what I saw. And so that was when I first heard of urban exploring and from there, it's kind of grown. I've got more into exploring. I've met a few people through it. I was given access to pictures and videos he'd taken whilst on expeditions with his friends. He also told me that he learns how to get access into these places through internet forums. Yeah, there is a huge internet culture for urban exploring. There's a few, uh, few main blogs and forums that come to mind. Uh, 28 Days Later seems to be the main one. I know for a fact that a lot of people do use 28 Days Later around Manchester. They can make a username and then from that username they can create posts in the various sections of the forums and you can post the report. If you go out and you find something, you take the pictures, you come back, you make a post on the forum. People can see this post, they can comment on it. So as fun as urban exploring may appear, you have to bear in mind that we live in a country with a legal system. The exact definition of trespassing according to the Oxford Dictionary is to enter someone's land or property without permission. But that's exactly what urban exploration is all about. So how did they get away with it? I met with barrister Tracy Olcock to get a lesson on the trespassing law in England. Trespass is mainly a civil offence and the difference between um, civil and criminal offences are a criminal offence can be anything from um, drink driving through to murder. For a civil offence, that would go to the county court and you will be dealing with a financial penalty. I think urban explorers, when they're trespassing, it's going to be thrill-seeking. I understand that they take photographs. So it's a combination, really, of the thrill and also to sort of view a building that they perhaps wouldn't be able to see. Normally, it's not open to the public. Whilst researching at home, I couldn't help but notice that most urban explorers keep their identities secret. I think that urban explorers want to be out of the limelight mainly because a lot of the places that urban explorers will go to um, perhaps are not necessarily legal, legal places to go to. I think urban explorers in the media are portrayed in a negative light. They're considered almost reckless teenagers. It involves going to places that you're not really supposed to be uh, going to. And so because of that, you know, people just don't want to draw too much attention to themselves. I mean, part of the adrenaline rush for a lot of people is, is not getting caught. And so you want to avoid that at all costs. The View from the North is another urban exploring website, primarily focused on old industrial buildings. When I asked the publisher about his thoughts on urban exploring, he messaged me back with the following statement. 
People have been trespassing and generally going into places they shouldn't have been for years, and are probably doing so without even realising that someone has given it a label of urban exploring. So whatever his or her intention may be, an urban explorer seems to have the same interests as any other explorer. Whereas a regular explorer may find reassurance standing somewhere where they feel comfortable, the urban explorer will find it in places they won't.